Welcome to Two Fine with Books. My name is Janelle and this is the final Cloak and Dagger Christmas video. This is my wrap up for week four and kind of final thoughts about Cloak and Dagger Christmas 2020. I can't believe it's over already. I've had such a great time this month reading really great mysteries, having fun chatting with you all um, in the comments um, about Cloak and Dagger Christmas. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, chatting with the co-hosts uh, for this and so thank you very much Kate for organizing this and for asking me to co-host. I've had a really good time and I hope you've enjoyed your Cloak and Dagger Christmas as well. So let's wrap this up with the final two books that I read for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. For the prompt of the lounge, I read After Claire by Marjorie Eccles. This is a uh, mystery set in the 20s, and this was actually really good. I gave it four stars, I quite enjoyed it. So it's the story of Lady Emily Fitzallen. This is 1922. She comes back home to um, Lays Morton House, um, it has been like 50 years or something like that since she's been back home. Uh, her, she's been living um, in India and various places around the world with her husband and she has come back home. Um, he has died and she's come back to, to see if she wants to live there or if she wants to uh, get rid of it now. I think she's the last left in her family. So she's in her 60s and uh, we find out as we read the story that her sister Claire disappeared like 50 years ago and she's never known what happened to her and so she really wants to kind of see if she can find out what happened to Claire. But while she is there, the, the bones of somebody are discovered in the garden. And it was actually just a really interesting story, a really interesting story about family and secrets and regrets. Um, and I, yeah, I really quite enjoyed it. And then for the prompt of the kitchen, and this one was both as um, a food based mystery and a small town mystery, I read Death in the Truffle Wood by Pierre Magnan. Now this is a book that was written in 1978 um, in France and it was not translated into the English until I believe about 2005. Yeah, 2005. It was translated by Patricia, sorry, I just lost it, Patricia Clancy. So one thing that was interesting is, I mean, it was so totally 1970s, you couldn't escape from that. Uh, there was a lot of talk of hippies and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but it was interesting, so the main character um, is, uh, oh I just forgot his name, Alain Morlan, and he has a pig that he uses to find truffles. So the food part of this was in the little village where they live there are a number of truffle hunters and this main character is one of them but he's the only one who has a pig and she's very good at, at her job. So there's a lot about truffles and um, how hard they are to find, how delicious they are and how um, uh, how expensive they are to sell, all of that stuff. Although aside from that, there wasn't a huge amount of descriptions of food which I was hoping for, especially because of the back. It says, um, let's see, oh yeah, if the plot doesn't have your mouth watering, the loving descriptions of French food will. And there wasn't really a huge amount of descriptions of, of French food. Um, so yeah, this one was was just okay for me. I gave it three stars. I think it was it was because it was from the seventies. I just um, it was just a little bit too seventies <laughs> for me. Uh, and there was always also an awful lot of of talk about women's breasts, like unnecessarily. So whenever he was describing people, if they were women, he always talked about their breasts, which got a little bit old for me. Um, but anyway, the the mystery was interesting because you knew right from the beginning who one of the killers was, but you 
had to wait till the very end to find out who the other killer is and his motivation. So on that part, that part of it was actually was pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, I gave it I gave it three stars and it fulfilled the prompt for the kitchen, which meant that I did all nine of the prompts, which means I reached Sherlock Holmes level, which is what I was hoping to do. So I was very excited about that. And then I I got a, a short story collection, a Christmassy short story collection from the library. And then there was another short story collection that I was slowly making my way through. And I thought, what if I attempt the Sherlock Holmes level through short stories? <laughs> and so I did. I thought, I'm going to see how many I can do first from this, which is Murder Under the Christmas Tree. This was put together by um, C Cecily Gayford. Uh, and so there's 10 mysteries in here and I thought I'm going to start here, see how many I can get from this one and then see if I can get the rest from this, which is Best British Mysteries edited by Maxim Jakubowski. And so I managed to do it. So in Murder Under the Christmas Tree, um, the billiard room prompt, which was to read a book that um, has sports or a game in it. This had Necklace of Pearls by Dorothy L. Sayers, and that is a story of um, a house party, a Christmas house party, and during the games that they're playing, um, a valuable uh, pearl necklace goes missing, and um, Lord Peter Whimsey, who is part of the house party, uh, investigates and sees if he can find the pearls. For the conservatory, um, the Price of Light by Ellis Peters totally fit. So the conservatory is to read a story about um, travel or a warm climate or nature. And so this is a Brother Cadfell story set at Christmas and um, herbs that he, um, that he cultivates and uses for medicines play a, a big role in that story. So I thought that's, that's nature. And that one was really good. I really enjoyed that Brother Cadfell short story. For the kitchen, uh, I read The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle by, by Arthur Conan Doyle. That is a classic Sherlock Holmes where a jewel, the blue carbuncle, is stolen and it is found in the throat of a Christmas goose. And so I thought that will totally count for kitchen. It is a totally a food based a food based mystery for the lounge i read death on the air by naya marsh and that is a one of her roderick allen series he gets called in to a home uh where there has been a death over christmas and that one was written in the golden age for the ballroom i read the name on the window by edmund crispin and for the ballroom, that was one where it's to have a party in it. And so this was, there was a party being held over Christmas and uh, someone gets found killed inside a, like there's like a folly on the grounds. And that one was kind of a bit of an impossible crime mystery, part of the Gervais Fenn series. Um, and that one was pretty good too. Uh, so then I got the other four from this Best British Mysteries. For the study, I read Once Upon a Time by Peter Turnbull. And that was a short story um, about um, a man walking his dog in the woods, finds a finger bone, I think. And, uh, and so then they have to call in an anthropologist and so that's why that one counts because for me, for this prompt, for the study, I was doing stories about archeology span or anthropology. And so that one totally fit. For the library, I read Bookbinder's Apprentice by Martin Edwards. Now that was one that's actually set in, um, in Italy, I believe. Yes, in Italy. And uh, that one was all about books. Uh, and book binding, which is really interesting. And ultimately that one was super creepy. It was really creepy. <laughs> For the haul, I read Tell Me 
by Zoe Sharp, and for that was uh, to read a new to me author, and I had never read a story by Zoe Sharp, and that one was a very short, short story. Um, and one where I kind of called it from the very beginning, but it was still pretty good. It was pretty clever. And then for the dining room, I read The Case of the Curious Quorum by Colin Dexter, and that one was really fun. So the dining room is all about um, a closed circle mystery or small um, circle of suspects. And so this one was really fun because Colin Dexter used... Um, uh, not Morse, but he, um, oh, Lewis. So Lewis is now the inspector, Hathaway is his sergeant, and so um, he's kind of done the, the follow-up to his, his famous Morse novels. Um, and so I was totally picturing Lewis and Hathaway from the TV show <laughs> when I was reading this, but what was super fun was that he dragged in people from the detection club for this, and so Lewis gets a letter in the mail from HRF Keating about um, money being stolen from, uh, from the coffers in the detection club. He mentions a lot of members of the detection club, and I think Colin Dexter was a member of the detection club, and so it was just kind of a, one of his, a way for him to maybe give a nod to these guys and do a, like a, a funny little story about, um, about them. And so I thought that was uh, very entertaining for sure. So I totally feel fulfilled to the Sherlock Holmes level as well in short story form. So that was really fun. And that was actually a piece of Cloak and Dagger Christmas that I really appreciated was that sometimes you just don't have enough time to read nine whole books uh, for a readathon like this, but it would have totally counted as short stories as well. And so, uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed reading those. Uh, then I also finished the, the books that I had wanted to read for the Create Your Own Holiday Adventure Readathon. I had two books left to read for that. And so I read um, Starring Miss Seaton by Hamilton Crane. And this was super fun. I love the character of Miss Seaton. She's kind of like a Miss Marple. She's a retired art teacher and uh, she lives in a small village and she kind of just stumbles upon things <laughs> and turns out to be really helpful to the police. She has her trusty umbrella that always plays a part in the stories and um, what what the police um, have now now in the series, this is later, later in the series, the police have hired her as a consultant, um, basically as a police artist, a sketch artist um, and because she's very good at drawing faces and stuff, but she also tends to draw scenes um, or pictures of people where she will add in like things have been like percolating in her brain and then so she draws them in such a way that helps the inspectors um, solve the crime. So that's very entertaining. So this was uh, to fulfill the prompt of reading with a main character over the age of 30 and of course she's a retired art teacher. I believe she's in her 60s. Um, and so yeah, this was just very entertaining. It was around the holidays as well. There was a, um, they're preparing for the, the pantomime that they're gonna put on on Christmas Eve in the village and that plays a huge part in the story, which is very entertaining. And I just really, really had fun reading this one. And then I read um, Murder in the Snow or its original title is Groaning Spinny by Gladys Mitchell, and this was to fulfill the prompt of set in a small town. And so Mrs. Bradley, this is um, Gladys Mitchell's series detective, she's a psychiatrist, and Mrs. Bradley goes to visit her nephew for Christmas. And he lives in um, near Oxford, so um, that's why it's subtitled A Cotswold Christmas. Um, and this one started out well. So she goes to visit her nephew and his new wife for Christmas. She meets a number of people in the area. There's a heavy snowfall and a man is found dead. So it starts out great, but to be perfectly honest, I just got really bored with this one. It took too long for anything to happen. And Mrs. Bradley is, that, is the type of detective 
who never ever tells you what she's thinking. She's like Sherlock Holmes that way, but she doesn't have a Dr. Watson to explain things to the reader. And so I didn't like the fact that she, that she kind of knew what was going on or had an idea who the killer was, but she never ever told anybody what she was thinking. And so it, I felt like it just dragged on. And it's a short story, it's a short book. It's not that long, it was just over 200 pages, but it felt like it took forever. And so it, the, the action started at Christmas, but it wasn't actually resolved until February. And so it just, yeah, I just felt like it really dragged on. So I was a little bit disappointed with this one. And then finally, uh, another Christmas mystery that I just wanted to include um, is Mistletoe and Murder by Carola Dunn. This is part of her Daisy Dalrymple series. So this is a historical mystery series set in the 20s in England. Daisy Dalrymple is from a titled family, but she marries uh, Inspector of Scotland Yard. And um, so she is a journalist. She writes a series um, for a magazine about country houses, which is a great because it allows her to go to a whole bunch of different places where she ends up getting involved in murder. And in this book, she um, she is doing a piece about Brock Dean Manor, which is an isolated, fortified manor house in Cornwall, which is excellent. Um, and um, but there is some sort of connection I'm not entirely sure with her family I can't remember and so her her mom ends up getting them all invited by the Earl to spend Christmas at Brock Dean Manor and uh, and on Christmas Day a visiting vicar is found stabbed in the chapel and it was just great fun it was a perfect cozy Christmassy read I really like the characters in this um, and the mystery was interesting and compelling and I actually read it really fast. Um, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It was just a really fun um, kind of closed circle Christmas historical mystery. So that is my Cloak and Dagger Christmas. Have you read any of these books? I would love to chat with you about them. I would also just love to hear what you've been reading for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. And since we are at the end of December now, I just wanted to let you know that starting on January 1st, I will be bringing you a series of my favorite books from 2020. I had so many I wanted to talk about that I had to turn it into a series. So for the first five days of January, you will be getting videos from me about my top 10 books in a variety of um, categories. So I hope you look forward to that and so I will see you for those videos very soon. Bye.